Large scale energy storage is entering a boom time. Today in the pitch, we explore the key value drivers and the technology improvements driving the segment's growth with Chad Spring, Energy Storage Project Sales Account Manager with SMA America. Uh, well, hey, Chad, thanks for joining me today in the pitch. Pleasure to be here. I see that you're a fellow Ohioan. Um, I am. Sorry, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, born and raised uh, Central Ohio. Um, graduated from the Ohio State University. So, or I'm sorry, the Ohio State University. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and how long have you been with SMA and uh, what's your focus there? Uh, I've been with SMA for about three and a half years now. Um, originally focused on some of our PV uh, developer and EPC accounts. Um, but recently, in, in about the last six months, have kind of transitioned over focusing on large scale storage. You know, that is uh, our topic today. You know, what is driving large scale storage? Because it is kind of booming right now. And it, I, it looks like it's going to kind of keep doing that. And uh, I really want to dig into the factors that are, on, you know, underneath all that and why that's happening and why that, <clears throat> how that can continue. But I guess before we dig into that, can you just kind of go over SMA's history in this space and your current position in the market? So uh, SMA and and I, we, we share a birthday. We uh, both founded in 1981. Since that time, SMA has now uh, achieved just around 100 gigawatts of inverter uh, installations globally. So uh, everybody knows of SMA. We're, we're a large kind of leading inverter player in the market. Um, but very early on, SMA was focused on you know some of the grid forming, off-grid islanding type applications. So that really allowed SMA to kind of become the early innovators of complex um, grid forming, black start capability, uh, which really today has now positioned us as a, really a leader and a differentiator uh, in the market. You know, our customers really trust that experience and expertise that, that we bring uh, to the rapidly growing uh, large scale storage industry. So. Um, and actually, in fact, that's, that's really most evident in our, our most recent milestone of uh, around one gigawatt of Sunny Central storage. That's our AC coupled storage solution. So around one gigawatt of that inverter installed in North America alone. You know, given the relatively young industry and the young market, I think that really further illustrates SMA's um, industry leading position in, in large scale storage. So large scale storage growth, like we said, you know, is going uh, pretty crazy right now. I mean, it's still young, but you're hearing about uh, installations all the time. That's like, hey, we're adding storage onto this or somewhere else. But, you know, there's like large scale storage even going in just on its own in certain applications. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a combination, you know, of proven technology, um, the cost of that technology coming down, better on state policies, and also this the tremendous amount of interest by all the stakeholders involved in these projects kind of gravitating toward what it does. In your position on the technology side of things, what changes are driving where the market's going right now? Good question. And I think you really hit on a lot of some of the key points that are really driving the, you know, the industry and and allowing for that growth. From the, you know, technology provider side of things, there there are a lot more battery suppliers in the market right now. Um, you know, we're seeing um, you know, some of those major players in, in China, like CATL, for example, those additional um, suppliers are really feeding the demand, uh, which is creating, you know, a lower lower cost, a lower price point as well for, for batteries. Uh, from an inverter solutions provider standpoint, you know, we have seen inverter pricing really drop dramatically over the past few years. Um, but all while that technology footprint, you know, the physical size of inverter solutions is really becoming much more compact. Um, so today, you know, for example, um, SMA's largest central storage inverter provides up to 4.6 megawatts of output. Um, and that combined with the transformer and SF6 ring main um, switch gear, all integrated on a 20 foot skid. So, you know, it's a really, really highly dense, compact, um, you know, uh, power skid. And, uh, you know, five, five years ago, you'd barely really be able to fit, you know, one megawatt on a skid of that size, let alone, you know, four and a half, 4.6 megawatts on a skid of that size. But I think also at the, at the utility level, you know, what's also driving this industry, because ultimately the utilities are really kind of the end 
you know, owners or, uh, you know, the PPA contractors for these, um, for these sites, um, they need to have a much deeper understanding uh, of battery storage and what those various use cases are and the benefits of, of those, those use cases. So, you know, they're including battery storage into their grid modeling to see how storage can really stabilize their systems and, and smooth out some of the, the fluctuations really seen with renewables. Um, you know, I mentioned PPA, um, but PPA and the cost of, uh, of ownership of solar and storage is really now reaching levels that can compete directly with other kind of more traditional, I guess, forms of, of generation. And for example, Excel Energy here in Colorado issued their uh, all source solicitation RFP. And in that they were looking for, um, you know, potentially uh, natural gas, fire generation, solar storage, wind, you, know, you name it, and they were considering it. And even at that time, a couple years back, solar and storage was really, really price competitive. And, you know, we, we've now seen other utilities like APS, like TEP in, in Arizona, publishing multi gigawatt battery storage plans for their grids. It's really exciting and really interesting to see the financials <clears throat> are now kind of coming in line with uh, what the utilities need for, for a viable solution. And so the doors are really wide open for for rapid storage growth and development. You know, the, the project we just named our solar plus storage project of the year uh, this year was a, uh, a landfill project that uh, incorporated storage, which I thought was pretty crazy considering, you know, how heavy, and, you know, um, the, the storage end of things can be and how you have to worry about, you know, the, the, the pressure on the site. But anyway, the, what was interesting to hear about was how adding storage changed the PV production of the site, you know, uh, and how storage value made up more than made up for the losses of having to change around the PV design on that site. So that was really interesting to me. And I'm wondering, you know, how are you seeing these new revenue streams being captured? And what are some of the specific functionalities making that possible at the technology level? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, utilities are, are really seeing how battery storage paired with solar or battery storage paired with wind can really make the asset a lot more reliable and dispatchable on their grid. So, you know, I think I, I mentioned earlier, uh, it really helps to smooth out some of those, uh, those fluctuations, uh, especially when you see the peaks and valleys, uh, you know, when the wind dies down uh, unexpectedly, or, uh, you know, if a dense cloud rolls over a, a PV field, you know, with more and more renewable generation interconnecting on the grid, that can cause frequency and voltage fluctuations which from a grid operator standpoint really makes, really makes the asset um, you know, unpredictable, but pairing it with storage really helps to, to smooth that off. So it, it's, you know, it is dispatchable, uh, to use that word again, it, it is dispatchable and uh, a reliable asset. You know, another lucrative you know, revenue stream, for example, is the uh, fast frequency response market in, in ERCOT down in Texas. Um, which that market is, is really challenging for uh, a storage site to, to play in. Um, there are a couple of new sites in Texas using SMA uh, storage inverters where we're able to achieve uh, under 220 millisecond plant-wide response times. And that's really important because that then allows those sites to play into this extra revenue stream. Um, and actually, with a future firmware release, uh, we'll be able to improve that inverter specific response time to under 80 milliseconds. So, you know, we're already, uh, you know, kind of pushing the boundaries of what uh, storage sites can do in their response time and the markets they can play in. And it's only going to going to get better and, and really open up, you know, more of these revenue streams moving forward. I, I guess that leads uh, into my next question. Just uh... On SMA specifically, you know, what are your current options for, you know, capturing the value of large scale storage right now? So we have a, a, a lot of different products, actually. Um, our newer Sunny Central inverter solutions have really been around for the last five or so years. In the past, we've had a Sunny Central product line. Uh, more recently, though, we've expanded that to up to, like I said before, about 4.6 megawatts of output. And that's in the same compact kind of power dense footprint that we that we previously had in our smaller 
output units. So we're getting more power out of the same sized inverters. But we do offer AC and DC coupled solutions for 1,000 volt and 1,500 volt battery projects. For SMA's Sunny Central Storage AC coupled solution, again, we offer both uh, you know 1,000 volt um, and those inverters are anywhere from 2.2 to 2.9 megawatts. And then for 1,500 volts, we offer 2.3 up to 4.6 megawatts. Uh, and, and all those Sunny Central storage inverters can be integrated, like I mentioned, on a 20-foot skid with the transformer, the switch gear, uh, for really the most power-dense solution on the market today. Our DC-coupled solution is, is fantastic, and uh, it involves up to six DC-to-DC DC converters, and those are connected through uh, our Sunny Central PV inverter with the DC-ready options selected. So um, that's SMA's topology for a DC coupled system is using our PV inverter. And then, you know, with uh, basically an additional bus bar within that inverter connecting the, uh, the DC to DC converters there. And, and the, you know, the SMA inverter and the DC to DC converters have really gone through uh, thorough and extensive integration and testing. So it's really a trusted and, and cohesive system, uh, you know, all backed by SMA warranty, uh, SMA communication, and, and, and logic. And so it's a, it's a really nice verified uh, approach. Uh, whereas we're seeing some other folks in the market kind of using, um, you know, various solutions providers, kind of patching that together uh, to create a DC coupled system. Yeah. So whether it's a, you know, a thousand volt, a 1500 volt project, AC or DC coupled, a one hour, a two hour, or a four hour system, we really have a great portfolio to support all of our customer project designs. So, hey, with all that being said, then, you know, where do you see large scale storage going from here? I mean, can we expect this amount of growth to continue going forward? I always get excited when I consider the storage market as a whole, um, because it allows me to kind of step back, you know, away from the the day-to-day -day minutia of you know the specific little project details that that take up the majority of you know of my time, but um, looking at the market as a whole, it's it's really exciting and it's it's neat that you know we're all here experiencing this and you know really kind of riding this this wave together and it's it's the future, I guess from a numbers standpoint, you know looking at the at the market and analyst forecasts and so forth, you know I've seen next year. Deployments are forecasted to be around 3.5 gigawatts of storage, and that's actually more than double this year's projections. You know, we'll see what the numbers end up with for 2020, and what kind of impact COVID had on those numbers. But um, you know, looking at somewhere around one and a half to to two, somewhere in that range, one and a half to two gigawatts deployed this year. Next year being 3.5, and then ramping up in 2025, forecasted to be roughly five gigawatts of, of deployed energy storage. We'll see if that trajectory stays on track, but it's, you know, it, the, the sky's the limit at this point.